Hello, and welcome to today's information session for the Professional Program in Regulatory Affairs at UC Berkeley Extension. Dr. Elissa Carney is our Program Director, and I am Erin Gunther, Program Specialist. Thank you for joining us today. In this presentation, I will share with you information about the regulatory affairs profession, examples of career paths, and how UC Berkeley Extension can help you build the knowledge base you need to reach your professional goals. I encourage you to submit your questions at any point during the presentation. Please note that some of your questions may be addressed later on. So let's begin. Regulatory affairs professionals are needed in various regulated industry sectors, including pharmaceuticals and medical devices. Regulatory affairs professionals have a multidisciplinary role in the development life cycle for a new drug or medical device. For example, with drug development, to grow in the regulatory affairs role, you need to have an understanding of the chemistry manufacturing and controls for both drug substance and drug product, as well as have a clinical and mechanistic understanding of what the drug product is designed to do. In order to be a regulatory affairs professional, it is imperative that you have the understanding of the process to bring a drug product to market. This is achieved in part by learning, experiencing, and being involved in each of the development process steps and interactions with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration or a respective regulatory body. According to the 2020 Global Compensation and Scope of Practice Survey of the Regulatory Profession, the majority of regulatory affairs professionals begin their careers in other fields such as quality assurance, product development, life sciences research, and engineering. You might wonder, what does a regulatory affairs professional do? What are their roles? Where in the product development process are they involved? Let's take, for example, the pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical industry. As mentioned earlier, the overarching goal of the regulatory affairs professional is to help bring forth the commercialization of a new therapeutic product to market. The regulatory affairs professional is involved in all stages of drug development, including after the product has been approved and marketed. Regulatory affairs professionals serve as the liaison between health authorities and the company. Health authorities may include, for example, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, our country-specific regulatory agencies. These authorities are tasked with reviewing and ensuring a product's quality, safety, and effectiveness prior to approving its entry to market. Regulatory affairs professionals also help companies navigate the ever-changing regulatory landscape so that a company can take appropriate steps to ensure regulatory requirements are met for a product's entry to market. As a regulatory affairs professional, you develop good working relationships and open communication with health authorities as your company develops the product. You will understand, anticipate, and identify what data are needed by the health authorities and convey that information to the project team. You will also prepare formal responses to the FDA's comments or questions as they relate to your filings. Additionally, you will lead a cross-functional team to prepare and conduct meetings with the health authorities. Regulatory affairs professionals also understand and stay current on the state and federal regulatory requirements. This is important because they then provide expertise and guidance to companies on regulations and recommendations on what course of action to take when new guidelines and regulations come into practice. Here are some examples of how regulatory affairs professionals work with their companies. They might inform their team on changes to data disclosure requirements to ensure compliance. Or they might advise their team on how to balance time, costs, or risks, how to prioritize, and how to develop contingency plans. A specific example of this might look like ensuring compliance with pediatric regulatory requirements and advising on required pediatric studies. Or understanding and anticipating regulatory changes associated with the Prescription Drug User Fee Act reauthorization. Regulatory affairs professionals also advise on labels for an intended product. Specifically, they perform intelligence on regulatory precedents or available guidance to inform the target product profile. 
They then assess the acceptability and validity of endpoints for product labeling. They also prepare FDA submissions and filings. This includes curating data and reviewing documentation for completeness, as well as ensuring that conclusions and claims are substantiated by supporting documents and data. They'll also coordinate cross-functional team reviews and approval of documents. These are just some of the roles and responsibilities of a regulatory affairs professional. As you can surmise, regulatory affairs professionals play an integral role in various parts of the product development cycle and interact with a multidisciplinary team. There are many job opportunities for regulatory affairs professionals displayed here on the screen. These include working as an independent consultant, being contracted with a research organization or government agency, and more. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics projects steady growth in the field of regulatory affairs and predicts that over 47,000 jobs will open up in this field between 2020 and 2030. This is partially due to growth and development and innovation of new diagnostic and therapeutic products, and also to increase in government regulation of the industry. As a result, the need for professionals to help companies navigate the regulatory landscape and facilitate the product's market entry is growing. Here are some examples of average salaries for regulatory affairs professionals in the San Francisco Bay Area. A regulatory affairs specialist one may start around $79,000 annually and advance after some years of experience. As a general guideline, a regulatory affairs specialist one position requires zero to two years of related experience. A specialist two requires two to four years. A specialist three needs four to seven years, and a specialist four will need to have seven or more years of experience. So, how do you enter and succeed in the regulatory affairs field? You will need at least a bachelor's degree in the life sciences, chemistry, or engineering. Note that a 2020 survey conducted by RAPS reported that more than 99% of regulatory professionals today hold a university degree, with 42% having a master's and about 22% with a doctorate. This same survey found that most regulatory professionals hold degrees in life or natural sciences, engineering, clinical science, regulatory affairs, or business, finance, or economics. In addition to having at least a bachelor's degree, you will need a foundational knowledge in regulatory affairs, which you can obtain through our professional program. You will also need to gain practical experience. And lastly, you will need to expand your professional network, stay informed with current and emerging topics in the profession, and get involved in a local regulatory affairs professional chapter. Here's how we can help to meet your educational needs and career goals. UC Berkeley Extension is the continuing education arm of UC Berkeley, the University of California's flagship campus. Since 1891, we've been assisting students in reaching their professional goals and accomplishments. We offer more than 65 professional certificates and specialized programs and more than 2,000 courses offered both online and in the classroom with 45,000 enrollments each year. We pride ourselves on academic excellence. All of our courses and instructors are approved by the appropriate campus department. Our instructors, most of whom also work in the field, bring their real world experience to the classroom. So when you enroll in a UC Berkeley Extension course, you are guaranteed a real world professional Berkeley quality education. Let's take a look at our professional program in regulatory affairs. To complete the program, you will need to complete five required courses and two units of electives. You have three years to complete the program, but most of our students complete the coursework in about one and a half years. The required courses include the following. We highly recommend that you start with principles of regulatory affairs, pharmaceuticals and medical devices to obtain an introduction to regulatory affairs and gain exposure to both the pharmaceutical and medical device sectors. 
In harmonization across worldwide applications, you will learn about successful licensure of products across the world. In IND, CTA preparation, submission, and agency interfacing, you will learn the initial steps that regulatory affairs professionals take in the product development lifecycle, including the responsibilities as facilitators and conduits between companies and regulatory agencies. You will also learn the role of regulatory affairs in the preparation, development, submission, and approval of IND CTA, including the roles of project management professionals. This course will discuss the studies that must be performed for the IND CTA, such as pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic. In the biologic license application, new drug application, and marketing authorization application, or BLA, MDA, MAA submissions and commercialization course, you will learn about the role of regulatory affairs during a clinical trial, preparing and submitting BLA, NDAs, and MAAs, addressing regulatory questions and getting ready for commercialization. In post-approval activities, you will learn about the role of regulatory affairs after commercialization, including phase four studies, safety surveillance, label management, and product recalls. We also provide a wide range of elective courses to help you grow professionally in a way that works for you. Electives give you the opportunity to customize your learning by taking those courses that are most relevant to your interests and your career. You will need to complete at least one to two of the following elective courses shown on the slide. They include Principles of Supply Chain and Manufacturing, Principles of Product and Process Development, Principles of Quality and Compliance, CMC, Chemistry Manufacturing and Controls, Regulatory Compliance for Pharmaceutical Products. You will learn from instructors who are passionate about the field and who love to teach. Here are a few of our instructors. They include subject matter experts with years of work and academic experience and expertise in their industry. What's more, they are also approved by UC Berkeley, ensuring that you get the academic rigor that you would expect from one of the top public universities in the country. UC Berkeley Extension offers online and classroom courses. Classroom courses are held at our main campus in downtown Berkeley, located just a block away from the University of California, Berkeley. We offer courses in all three academic terms, spring, summer, and fall. Courses typically are offered during the day on weekends or on weekdays or Friday evenings. The courses are one to two semester units. For our one unit courses in this program, students attend two full day class sessions, while a two unit course translates to four full day class meetings. UC Berkeley Extension offers live online courses every fall, spring, and summer session. Similar to in-person classes, live online courses typically are offered during the day on weekends or on a weekday or Friday evenings, and students attend real-time virtual classes via Zoom. Earning your award of completion is a simple three-step process. First, register for the program. We recommend you do this before starting your second course. It's fine to take the first course, Principles of Regulatory Affairs, Pharmaceuticals, and Medical Devices, without making a commitment. This way you can see how you like it and then decide whether to continue and register for the full program. Then, complete all the required courses, including electives, with a grade of C or better within the three-year time period. Please note that one of the biggest benefits is that you pay as you go. This means you don't pay for the entire program at once. Instead, you pay for each course one at a time. Prices vary based on each course, but in total, the cost is approximately $6,150, excluding the costs of materials and the program registration fee. Lastly, once you've completed all of your courses, you'll receive an award of completion. Many of you might be wondering, what do your graduates go on to do? 
We're always very proud of our students' success. Many of our instructors share stories of former students who have landed wonderful positions or who have advanced in their careers. Here is a recent graduate, Reese Reed, who added business acumen to cancer research by completing the professional program in regulatory affairs. Reese Reed had built his career around developing new therapies for cancer by utilizing the immune system and working at top universities in the UK and US. Then he left from academia to biotech and found an opportunity to gain new skills around getting new drugs into clinics. In a recent interview, Reese said he had wanted to learn how to take science that he had been working on in the lab and package it in a way that the FDA wanted so that therapies could be moved from conception into a therapy for patients. He also said he knew the Berkeley name and people within his organization who had done other Berkeley Extension courses. For Reese, the Saturday courses did not interfere with his day-to-day -day work, and after reading the course descriptions, he realized that these were areas he wanted to learn about, such as the structure of an IND, which is covered in our IND CTA Preparation, Submission, and Agency Interfacing course. So how do you get started? We recommend that you have a bachelor's degree in biology, chemistry, or engineering. If you are new to extension, you'll need to create a free student account through our website. You will use this account to enroll in and pay for your courses, check your grades, and track your progress through the program. Then, enroll in your first course, Principles of Regulatory Affairs, Pharmaceuticals, and Medical Devices. I suggest visiting the course page on our website and finding a section that fits your schedule. I also recommend that you sign up for our newsletter, which is available from our course page on the website. By doing this, you'll receive monthly emails about upcoming courses and new blog posts. Thank you for submitting your questions, many of which we've been able to answer during this presentation. Here are some more that have come in. Do I need to be registered in the Regulatory Affairs Program in order to take classes? No, you do not need to be registered for the program to begin taking classes. Can I register for the program after I complete one or more courses at extension? Yes, you may register for the program at any time, even after you've started taking classes. How long does it take to complete the program? This varies based on individual work-life balance. On average, students complete the program in about one and a half years but students must complete the program within three years. What types of professionals will be in my classes? The vast majority of regulatory professionals working today began their career in another field before transitioning into regulatory affairs. According to data collected in a 2020 survey by the Regulatory Affairs Professional Society, professionals transitioning into regulatory affairs have careers in closely related fields such as quality assurance, research and development, life sciences research, and engineering. Many of the students in our program are looking to transition into the regulatory affairs profession and are current professionals who want to have deeper understandings of the regulatory affairs profession. So your classmates may currently be working in these related professions and are wanting to develop a deeper understanding of regulatory affairs. How do I find out about internships or other employment opportunities? While we do not offer regulatory affairs internships for this program, you certainly can speak with our instructors and network with your classmates who may know of an opportunity at their respective companies. Additionally, you might consider getting involved with the local chapter of the Regulatory Affairs Professional Society to broaden your network to meet professionals at companies that may have internship opportunities. Additionally, you can reach out to local recruiters. What types of networking is available to me in this program? Be sure to interact with your instructors as they have extensive practical work experience and knowledge of the profession and your classmates, 
some of whom may already be in the profession or in a related career path. And finally, which elective courses should I take to complete the program? We have several, and your decision should be based on your specific interests. If you have any questions about which elective to choose, please visit our website and contact us at any time. If you have any additional questions, please email us at biotechonline at berkeley.edu. We would love to hear from you and discuss how this professional program or individual courses can help you on your career path. Thank you again for taking the time to learn about our program and course offerings and regulatory affairs. We look forward to seeing you in one of our classes soon.